Hello, Internet, and welcome back to, uh, you know, at this point, you should know what this show is about, so let's just skip the intro part. Now, normally when I make this show, I look over the changes from the last two weeks on the GitHub page. Now, usually this is like, uh, I don't know, like 10 pages maybe of the commit section of GitHub. However, this time around, though, there were only about four pages. Now, I almost mentioned this in our last show, but it seems like there's been a fair bit of slowdown in new content. I'm not calling anyone out or complaining about this. I just wanted to let you know that there there aren't very many big things to talk about. Now in this week's show, I've only got two big changes, really. The rest are very small things. Some of them are things that I normally would not even mention, but to fill the show, I picked a lot of these more minor stuff to talk about this week. But anyway, that's enough of that. It's a slightly different show, probably going to be more text than usual, since each one will be so brief and blah blah, let's just get moving. Also, I suppose I should mention, hey everybody, happy Thanksgiving if you're from America. I know Canada also does Thanksgiving, but they do it at a different time so you know whatever so first up today from uh, I'm gonna say Az Azalali we've got a fix so that enemies will no longer drop their integrated weapons when they die an example of this would be bionic claws these things are obviously not something that should be dropped when an enemy dies and it's a simple change so you know what's not to like here next up today from Illison we've got a fix for waiting a few weeks ago there was a PR that added additional options to the wait menu apparently that had broken some of the existing wait duration so this PR here just uh, fixed up some of the things that were broken. I also don't think I mentioned that previous PR in, in a previous show either. It added the option to wait 20 seconds and 1 minute for instances where you wanted to wait less than the previous minimum of 5 minutes. Anyway, all of that should be sorted now and you will have those extra options available to you when you use the wait menu. Next up today, we've got a change, same person, to how the dirt mounds will work in the game. You've probably seen this at some point. The burrowing creatures in the game would leave behind a trail of these dirt mounds as they moved around. Now previously, these were always permanent fixtures as far as I know, and these were pretty hideous. They really just a very ugly thing. So now based on this PR, they should now be temporary. They will still leave a trail, allowing you to identify where they're moving around, but instead of being a permanent mound, it will go away after a short period period of time. These mounds are also no longer treated as terrain, which addressed a bug where the mounds would overwrite things beneath them. In other words, a gravel terrain tile would then become this mound destroying the gravel. So yeah, this is just all around a nice change. I've personally been very irritated by these in the past. I just thought they were so, so ugly. And so I'm pretty happy to see this. Next up today, also from Illison, we've got a change to mutation interrupts. Now we talked about this previously. A message will pop up if you mutate, allowing you to halt whatever activity you're doing. And you can disable these messages completely if you want to through the distraction manager. Well apparently this was triggering when NPCs mutated as well as when the player mutated. And obviously we care a lot less about an NPC mutating than if we do it ourselves. So this PR changed it so that these NPCs should no longer trigger those messages. This is short, it's sweet, it's a nice little quality of life. Next up today from Aleph, we've got a fix regarding harvesting blood from creatures. I think I actually saw several PRs about this, or maybe that was issues, I don't remember. I'll just grab one to show on the screen here. Basically, the takeaway that I got is that some creatures could be harvested for blood, even though they would not bleed as a result of being attacked or whatever. And this should now be fixed. If an enemy doesn't bleed normally, you will not be able to harvest their blood using the butchery menu. I don't even know really what you do with blood in the game. We've talked about like a million things we could do with with it but I think it's just a handful of cooking recipes but yeah anyway sorry to those of you who collect buckets of blood I guess I don't know Next up today from Erwis, we've got a change to appliances. So you will now see if your appliance circuit has a battery attached. I literally cannot think of anything to say about this other than that it's a nice bit of quality of life and yep, just moving along. Again, this is a very short show today, so I'm just uh, glossing over a lot of things. Next up today from Tiberian Yuan, we've got a new trait called Stiff Knees. This is an evolution of the Bad Knees trait, a, a much more extreme version of it. And the idea here seems to be that your knees are so busted, you literally cannot bend your legs anymore. I've never met anyone in real life with this problem. I'm sure it exists, uh, but the only people I know who can't bend their knees, they have like uh, old school prosthetics that don't allow for that. But anyway, they reference in the PR that moving on to difficult terrain, such as a bush, would take a full 10 seconds. Now this is an enormous amount of time, especially if you're in combat, so I think this trait will be very difficult indeed. Of course, that's sort of the point, and I don't really, you know, have any issue with that. It is essentially 
actually just the bad knees trait, but instead of the 1.25 multiplier on movement, it's 3.5. Uh, so yeah, anyway, new trait, you really don't want to have this trait and etc. Next up today, oh big shocker, it's another one from Illison. Now this PR addresses portal storm monsters. Normally some of these creatures would appear and then they would disappear after a set period of time or when the storm ends or whatever. Unfortunately, if you save the game and then loaded it later, these creatures would persist forever. Well, why not just kill these monsters, you ask? Well, unfortunately, some of them are incredibly dangerous. The giant appendage, for example, has roughly a bajillion HP and therefore is basically unkillable. Anyway, this was obviously a problem and it should be fixed now as of Monday. If you already have a save with these creatures remaining around indefinitely, I'm not sure that updating will actually fix it. You may end up having to use the debug menu to kill off the enemies that already exist in your save. Hopefully, though, it will retroactively fix any broken saves that people might have and really regardless, it's not Nice to see this get fixed. Next up today, we've got a mutable farm from Lilum, and I'll spare you the details of how this works, which, uh, you know, is a fun way of me saying that I have no idea how it works. But anyway, I'll just give you the basics here. For a long time in this game, our rural map gen has been pretty scuffed. It got some fixes over the last few years. We have many more rural locations than we did previously. But even so, we've all seen it. The farms are neatly organized little squares. Maybe they have silos. Maybe there's a farmhouse. And as a country bumpkin though, I can attest that this is not really how farms look in the real world. The plots in the game are very small, usually just a single field for example, which is really not how things are in the real world. But anyway, anyway, this PR adds an enormous farm layout that will be varied in its appearance. It's still not like real life, it's pretty hard to make something random gen that also tracks with farms in the real world, but it is still a super big bit of map gen with uh, quite a bit of randomness to it. Now I believe the way that this works is that it's guaranteed to spawn the part with the farmhouse. Everything around it though, all the fields and whatnot, those are all the random bits. Now I really like the idea of this, I'm going to have to play with it a bit to see how often it shows up, things like that, but yeah, I think this is actually really interesting. The random gen layout looks much more organic and natural and, you know, conceivably is something you would see in real life. And then finally today from Venera we've got some zombie forms for mutants and uh, you know I'm not really a fan of this phrase but it also adds meat cocoons. Uh, so basically most animals, NPCs, etc. they reanimate as zombies after they die. Now this is not true for most if not all of the mutant creatures in the game, they simply drop dead and never come back. Now this is sort of counter to our lore. The rule of thumb is that biomass is biomass, and with the exception of nether creatures, most things should have some form of zombification. This PR seeks to address that in a way that is not really how we handle other zombification in the game. Instead of making hundreds of zombie variants for the different mutants, they've created a cocoon system. When one of these creatures dies, they will become a pulpable corpse. If your tile set has an indicator for something being unpulped that will appear as it normally does. After the reanimation timer ticks over, it will turn into one of these meat cocoons, the size of which will depend on the source creature. The reanimation timer is something like six hours, if I recall correctly. I don't see why it would be different for these creatures here. I assume that this thing would then release some sort of monster that I'd have to deal with, but I couldn't get that to work in the game. I waited a very long time and the cocoon never did anything. I actually waited several days, nothing happened, and then I started using the debug menu to time travel forward just waiting for anything to happen. I even teleported away and waited around for a while before teleporting back thinking you know maybe it wouldn't evolve or change or whatever because I was near it and then I eventually attacked it instead but upon death it just burst into a big pile of blood it never spit out any new creatures. So I'm not really sure what I'm doing wrong in my testing but for the time being let's just assume that it worked properly as it's outlined in the PR. It does seem like maybe there are some hiccups here but hopefully it will get straightened out eventually. So anyway based on the PR, what is supposed to happen is that a creature is supposed to eventually emerge from that cocoon. There were six of them added in this PR, referred to as amalgamations. Depending on the size of the cocoon, which is based on the size of the original monster, you will then get different combinations of these amalgamations. The smallest will produce a single swarmer, and larger will spawn a mix of the small and medium monsters. These all have pretty straightforward names and abilities that you're going to be familiar with. Caustic has acid damage, charged has 
electric stuff, so on and so forth. They also did have some new special attacks made specifically for these creatures, so there will be some flavor text on the things that they do, but ultimately, you already know how these things work. The easy thing here, though, is that if you're careful, you're never going to have to deal with these enemies. Just pulp or dismember corpses the same way that you always have, and you're rarely, if ever, going to see these creatures. Although they will spawn in a different way from your standard resurrection, they are still prevented in the same way, just pulp the corpses. Now as for my actual opinion, I don't have a ton of thoughts on this. Making it so that an enemy can come back as a range of creatures is different, and I don't hate it or anything. I think it's a pretty interesting way to do things. With that though, hopefully all of that made sense. I think we're going to bring this very short show to its conclusion. Looks like we're going to come in about 10 minutes. Everyone, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Apologies for it being quite so short. And I, of course, will be back in a couple of weeks with another episode, so I'll see you next time.